Hi there, my name's Ryan and this is a demonstration to accompany our recent masterclass on application services and dynamic dashboards. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be building an application to monitor an auto-scaling group shown here with two instances inside. And we're going to be monitoring that via an SNS notification so that auto-scaling actions are published as JSON objects into an SQS queue to persist the event. And it's this queue that we're then subsequently going to read with a custom application written in Python that will pull the data and store it in the DynamoDB table of the instances that have come and gone. And we're also going to use that same Python code to publish some data to an S3 bucket that will be holding a static website. So that custom application is a simple Python script that reads SQS and then generates data for S3. And we have a static site hosted in S3, which is just HTML and JavaScript. So to get this going, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a CloudFormation stack. And this template is available at the following URL and will be available for you to download after this demo. So in the AWS console, I can go to the CloudFormation tab and I can create a new stack. Here I'm going to create a stack and give it a name SNS Dashboard. And I'm going to provide CloudFormation with a URL, my S3 URL, for the location of the template file. That template file will now be read, and you can see that there's two parameters being asked for, which are declared in the top of the CloudFormation template. Now, this is going to be the number of servers that we can create in a couple of differing application auto-scaling groups. We're going to take the defaults in this demo and create two application servers, and then I'm going to tag my resources so they'll be easier for me to find in the console later on. So behind the scenes, this is going to create a whole bunch of resources for this section of this demonstration. And once we um, click through the wizard, we'll be taken to the default screen then on the CloudFormation view, and we can see some of the resources being created. Now behind the scenes, we're going to be creating a security group with this template. We're going to create a notification in order to stick some information onto an SQS queue. We're going to create the SQS queue itself for writing data into, we're going to create the auto scaling launch configurations and group to create our simple application server group. And then we're going to add a notification to that auto scaling group that will deposit messages as JSON into SQS over SNS when things happen in auto scaling. And then we're going to create an S3 bucket for our output. We're actually going to create DynamoDB table 2. We're going to start some instances and then we're going to be able to bootstrap our monitoring application if we choose to create one, that will run our Python code and tie everything together. So returning to our console, we should be able to see now that our CloudFormation stack has processed more actions running through the template, and we'll get to the point where that's complete. So here we can see the resources being created, and if I refresh again, have a look at some of the events that have occurred, we can see we've created resources that completed policies, IAM roles, and so on and so forth. But the core of what we're doing is tying together an SNS topic with an auto-scaling group and the notifications of actions in it, and then subscribing to that topic via SQS. So the first portion in our template is actually tying together an instant launch and instance terminate notifications and publishing them to the topic. And then the second part is creating an SQS queue with a subscription on it to that topic so that we pull the information, which are JSON objects, into our SQS queue. We can then read those things from a queue because they're deposited there for us to look at. So now returning to our console, we can see that our template is stack has completed and we can see the resources that are being created. And we'll now have some outputs from this template, which we can use a little bit later. So the outputs tab will show us, for example, security groups and the watcher output URL. We'll come back to that later. But if we flip to the SQS browser within the AWS console, we'll be able to see some of the messages that have initially been deposited because we created an auto scanning group and therefore instances have been created and we should receive some events. So shown here is my queue and I can view the messages in the queue. We can see I've got three. I'm going to poll for 900 seconds because this will lock the messages for this point in time. Start polling in the browser and we'll see three messages and we can drill down into those messages and have a look at the JSON data that's being created as part of the auto-scaling actions that have occurred. So these are events that have occurred within that group, which can then be read in this browser or by an application. And it's later on that we're going to be adding an application 
our monitoring application, simple piece of Python that will then read these messages, parse them, put them into DynamoDB, and then also write them out as some information for a static website in S3. So we can stop polling, that will return the messages to the queue, and then release them for processing later. Right, so let's update our stack and add back into the mix then the application, the custom code that's going to read those messages. So I'm going to add to the right hand side of this diagram, my monitoring instance is going to write to Dynamo and to S3 so that we can drive a website. So if I go back to the CloudFormation view, I can update the stack. Now I can simply provide the same template URL as before, so it will reread this template file. And now I'm going to play with the parameters that it gives me at the start. So specifically, I'm going to add a queue watcher instance. And this will instruct my autoscaling group to create an instance in this group that's going to do some work for us. So if I continue to tick through the wizard, I'll get to the point of creating this. And there we are, we're updating progress. So behind the scenes, what this instance is going to do on a bootstrapping basis is it's going to install some tools, download a static site from S3 and push it to our bucket and download a monitoring Python script and set it running. And you can grab that script from the URL shown below. Simple piece of Python. Now that piece of Python does a four step process. It reads some messages from an SQS queue, writes that data after parsing it to DynamoDB, forms a JSON file with some updated results and then pushes that into S3 for some JavaScript to read. The static site is driven off an instances.txt that's dropped in from our Python and some HTML and JavaScript. And then when a browser loads, it's going to interpret, and on a periodic refresh, we'll be doing a jQuery get to pull this instance's JSON text from S3 and then refresh the page after forming up some tables. So, dropping back into the console, we should now be able to see in our EC2 tab that we have some new instances, or one new instance being created because we've set the count in our monitoring autoscaling group to be one. So going back to EC2, filtering via my um, application stack name, SNS, and we can bring up the instances. And we can see there, top two created previously, the bottom one in the process of being created, which is our monitoring app. So once this is up and running, we will then be able to use one of the outputs from our CloudFormation stack, which was a URL. So if we drop back into our CloudFormation view, we should be able to see that that update is now complete. And by the time we look at any of this, our instance will have been created. So there's our output URL. So if I open this URL, I will be opening my static website on top of S3. So let's click through, open up a tab. Here we can see my two application instances that were in that auto scaling group now being displayed and we can see that we've got instance ids here um, which i can then go and double check against my ec2 console view so looking back in ec2 we can just see that these are real instances again filtering my view and there we can see the instance ids and let's just look at them there and check that they are similar there we go to we the ones that we have over there. Okay, so now that's force an auto scaling event to occur and see what happens. So if we were to go back to our EC2 dashboard, I can terminate these two application servers. And by terminating them, because our auto scaling group has a minimum of two, auto scaling will kick in and it will recreate those instances. Um, and it will recreate those, and we should be able to see that being reflected then over a period of time in our new dashboard because we're going to publish these events via SNS. And deposit a message on SQS queue, that queue is going to be periodically read by our custom application and it's going to update the instances file on our static web server. And here we can see we've enacted two instance terminations and one new creation. Now we can force this further with the command line tools. And the first thing I'm going to do is use AS describe autoscaling groups to get our autoscaling group name that was created under our CloudFormation script. So if I use the command line tools here on an EC2 instance, I'll then be querying our APIs and I'll be returning a bunch of results. And I can scroll up here and I can see that my auto scaling uh, group in this case is called SNS dashboard application server group and then we need the hash. So if I take that value, I can then put it into another command called AS set desired capacity. Now I'm going to initiate a set desired capacity 
on my auto scaling group and then increase the number of servers and then over time in my dashboard again via the SNS notifications and messages on queues I should then be able to see more instances being rendered and I'm going to set my desired capacity to five instances so off we go launch that command there we go okay desired capacity set now if we drop back to the EC2 view and also my dashboard view EC2 view here and refresh I should see more instances being created and there we can see we've got three instances being created and we can see my two instances that are running there and if I look at my dashboard I will refresh and over time I will then see the extra three being added there's one being added to my dashboard via the mechanism that we set up in SQS and SNS as that refreshes, we now have our five instances in view. So we can see here, we've very effectively and simply created a dashboard view with a bit of HTML and JavaScript that will enable us to monitor auto scaling for instances. But this data is also held in DynamoDB. So we can take a quick look at the DynamoDB view in our console. We'll see the table that was created as part of our CloudFormation script. And then we can explore the data in this table. We'll be able to see that all the records, whether they are active or not, are held as an audit in DynamoDB. So we can see here are instances that have been terminated and the ones that are currently running. And this is where our JSON is being created from passed under our static site. So end of the demo. So find out more at aws.amazon.com and go Google for my masterclass for a 45 minute presentation in much more detail around these concepts.